Hello ladies and gentlemen, Reginald Scott here. And some time ago I did a video on electronic gear changing. And I actually got a really positive response from that video. I was quite surprised. I thought people would lynch me. You know, there'd be an angry mob outside my house carrying bits of Shimano and SRAM and burning torches and I would have been dragged off and lynched. But it turned out there was actually quite a lot of cyclists out there who shared my opinions. And somebody said, you know, great video, whatever. Um, can you give me your opinion on disc brakes? So that's what this video is going to all be about. It's just going to be me talking about my opinion on disc brakes. Now, I'm no expert. I don't work in the, the cycling maintenance industry. Uh, not yet, anyway. And uh, I, I couldn't honestly give you an in-depth, detailed uh, analysis of the, the real capabilities of disc brakes. But I can give you my opinions on what I've read, what I've seen, and uh, my own personal experiences. So... Are disc brakes dangerous? Are they safe? Um, I think this is a bit of a non-argument, really. I think this is something that's been, been brought up by people um, who are resistant to technology. And surprisingly, I'm not. I'm not resistant to technology. Um, I know people know that I dislike electronic gear changing, but that's not because I have a problem with electronics, as I stated before, and not because I don't like an improvement in technology and cycling. Um, so I take a different opinion with disc brakes. So the, recently the, the trials with them in the UCI have been stopped and the Pro Peloton have been stopped because of injuries sustained during crashes. Um, there's some debate as to whether these disc brakes are actually responsible for those injuries. Um, and there's two points I'd like to make. Firstly, there's a lot worse things out there that you could potentially fall on or lacerate yourself on already on a bike and on a road. You know, you've got all the hard objects to worry about that you're going to collide with. You've got horrific road rash that cyclists suffer from. I think three years ago, a cyclist got knocked off by one of the team cars and then ended up in a barbed wire fence. It completely destroyed his legs. Um, so cyclists have a lot to worry about other than disc brakes. And I don't think it's going to worry a pro too much that there's this extra bit of metal on their bike that potentially could hurt them in a crash because there's so much more to worry about. Having said that, um, I've never understood why they don't round off the edges on disc brakes. At the moment, I believe they're laser cut and they come out the manufacturing extremely sharp with flat ends, which I've never understood because it would be a lot easier to push them through the calipers, through the pads, if they were rounded on the edges, but they don't seem to be. Now, this is obviously because it's a lot cheaper to manufacture them as they are than have an additional process within your, your factory to round off the edges to make them less sharp, less, less blade-like. And as it's only the sides of the disc that actually matter for braking, not the edges, then I don't really see why we can't do that. Um, so that's one thing I would say. Another thing that's been said is they tend to heat up during long descents. Um, and this can reduce braking efficiency, but also lead to a potential burn if you if your skin touches the rotor, um, if you lean your leg against the disc when you finish riding for whatever reason. Um, and there's a potential hazard there. But again, I don't think it's a massive one as long as you remember not to do that. It's a bit like getting oil on your leg with the chain. Um, an experienced cyclist will look at a novice and see the big chain mark up their thigh. Uh, their calf muscle, sorry, and go, yeah, he's a novice because he's been leaning his bike against his thigh, which an experienced cyclist, you won't see them do that because they know the chain is there. And I think it's it'll be a bit like that. I think um, you'll learn that once you've burnt yourself once, don't touch the rotor after you've been descending. Um, but obviously there is that, that, that potential there to make them less efficient on long descents. Now, do I think they offer any advantages? Again, I think it depends what kind of rider you are and where you are. Um, I've been reading about this and the, the opinions of a lot of pro athletes and a lot of experienced riders is this, that if you are a commuting cyclist who commutes on a cross bike or a road bike and you carry a, carry a heavy backpack or maybe you're a heavy person or you have heavy panniers, a disc brake could give you a real advantage. It gives you more modulation on the brakes, gives you better braking power overall, um, stopping a much heavier weight. Um, also wet weather, 
I mean, if you live in the UK, you're going to be exposed to a lot of rain, wind, sleet, snow, and that's all going to reduce the efficiency of a caliper brake, especially on carbon rims. Now, if you're commuting to work on a carbon rim, well, well, very swanky. Um, I would advise you switch the alleys because all that dirt, road dirt and silt and stuff in the winter is just going to wreak havoc with those carbon fiber wheels. You'd, you'd be pretty mad to uh, be commuting on a carbon bike like that. You need something a bit hardier. So, as I say, these um, cyclocross and uh, commuting bikes are, are probably really well suited to disc brakes. So, on that side of it, I think disc brakes would be really, really useful to commuters. As for pro athletes, recreational cyclists and people that live in warmer climates, I don't actually think they're necessary. And um, you can get as much braking power um, or as much as you need from a decent clean caliper brake as you can from a, a disc brake. Um, as long as you're an experienced rider, th there's really no difference. Um, for me, the difference comes in weight. Obviously, discs weigh a lot more. They're much more expensive. They're much harder to maintain. I mean, I've played around with mechanical disc brakes, and they're a right pain in the ass. Um, they often rub. They make a lot of noise, um, and they're really hard to get right. Like, I had one for weeks. I was playing around with a friend's one. And I could not get the pads to stop rubbing. It was really annoying the hell out of me. Um, you know, caliper brakes are just so much easier to, to, to play with, to open, to get the wheel in and out of than discs. Discs are an absolute ball ache when it comes to that. And hydraulic discs, I can't even imagine that. I mean, I've, I've worked with hydraulics in industry and I hate it. There's nothing worse than getting hydraulic oil everywhere. And the idea that I'd have to do an oil change on my bike like that, it, oh, just it depresses me um so for me living now in a warmer climate where wet weather isn't so much of a problem certainly not sleet and snow i don't need them you, you don't need them um coming downhill you're better off with with uh, caliper brakes climbing weight wise you're better off with caliper brakes and maybe if the technology improves they'll find a way to work quick releases back into caliper brake uh, disc brake systems and make them easier to change but at the moment with the through axle designs that a lot of companies are going for you've got a lot more downtime when you have a, a wheel issue or a tire issue on a disc um, so that that's my thoughts on them really if you are a commuter if you live in a wet miserable country if you're carrying a lot of weight on your back and if you're not competing uh, but yeah why not discs I mean it, it sort of makes sense to me with the heavier frames and with the, the commuting bikes um, in wet weather and bad weather. Um, also, just to let you know that silt, if like fine muddy silt, can actually reduce the, the, the life of uh, disc rotors and disc pads. So if you do actually get fine dirt in them and it rubs over time, much worse than caliper brakes will, uh, you can really reduce the, the life of your bikes, um, bike discs quite considerably. But generally, hazardous conditions, you're better off with discs. If you just want to go fast, like most pro athletes do, then caliper brakes are for you. I did read one uh, synopsis by a pro athlete who'd spent 14 years in the peloton, and what he said was um, two things. Most riders are concerned about going faster, so they're not going to be willing to sacrifice weight for speed and acceleration, so they're going to stick with calipers for now. Um, they're more aerodynamic. And in my opinion, they look better. I mean, that's the biggest issue for me. I think rotors on road bikes are just hellish ugly. And I'm all about style, so I really, really love the uh, the sleek, kind of not-in-your-face um, caliper brakes. But one other th last thing he said was that he believed, actually, that you're more likely to have more, likely to have more crashes with uh, disc brakes than you are with caliper brakes, because if you tell a bunch of cyclists that they can brake later in the wet or make them think they've got better braking capability in the wet, they'll be less cautious on cornering and so on and so forth, and therefore more likely to take risks which end up in accidents. And there's one thing you have to remember, and that is that the, the brake is limited by the surface area of the tyre. If you put much more, more uh, braking power into the surface of the tyre, you're more likely to lock the wheel up and skid. I mean, road wheels are very slim. There's very little uh, contact patch on the wheel to uh, the tyre to the ground ratio. So if you think you've got more braking and you slam the brakes on, you're just going to go into a slide. 
and no matter whether you've got discs or calipers, you're going to end up coming off. So in that sense, he might be right. In that sense, they might actually not be safer because I'm probably more cautious in the wet with a caliper brake than I would be with a disc. Um, having experienced carbon fiber wheels in the wet though, yeah, I can definitely see why they would be an advantage. Um, but again, like I say, maybe I'd just be more cautious with a carbon wheel on a caliper brake and less likely to sling it into a corner and cause myself serious injury. And the thing that really wins races in in the Tour de France at the moment is acceleration and top speed and a, a, a disc brake doesn't really help in that at all um, might help you ever so slightly on the cornering but the really really good descenders that you see in the Tour de France are people who are just fearless and have a good aero position so anyway that was me rambling on about it um, yeah discs are great nothing against them um, but You've got to pick the right piece of equipment for the right situation. And for me, I won't be buying them. In the future, they may be almost compulsory. Uh, but at the moment, I'm going to steer clear of them just because they're expensive and I don't need them. Um, and I think most people don't. But like I say, if you've uh, got a big bike or a trike or a shopping bike, uh, one of those car cargo bikes, they would definitely suit uh, disc brakes, actually, because they have a much fatter tyre and you you're trying to stop a much bigger weight. So yeah, for them, for sure. But uh, lightweight, you know, 6kg road bikes is just not necessary. Anyway, with that, I'll uh, bid you good day. Thanks for listening to my ramblings and uh, yeah, whatever you decide. See you guys.